It's been about 15 minutes, so our primer is dry. It's going to have a slick um, finish to it when it when it dries, and, and that's normal. Wet sand uh, all of your primer with 600 grit sandpaper, and in spots like this, um, I did my best to keep this line as smooth as possible, but I'll definitely focus on sanding this this edge down here so that it doesn't sort of show through the, uh, the repair in the later stages. This is how your primer should look before you spray base coat over it. Okay, it should be dull because you've sanded every square inch of it and there should be no, no hard edges. So I sanded this edge right here and I can feel with my finger, it's very, very smooth. So let's get the paint formula for uh, this bumper. We'll go to ms.formulaexpress.com and we'll log in with the uh, user and password that you receive with your bumper pro kit and enter the paint code uh, from the car. In this case, it's 8P4. And choose the uh, manufacturer and model. Choose the standard option. Now to paint a bumper corner, we're looking to mix about four sprayable ounces. The software doesn't like to mix in small quantities, so a little trick is to set it to 40 and just move the decimal point one, uh, one spot to the left. So these are the, uh, the 10 bottles of, of paint that compose uh, Toyota Indigo Ink Pearl. And it, uh, the formula tells us how many grams of each to add to our mixing cup. Um, until we have the, uh, the exact uh, paint um, ready to spray. And we've got all of the bottles of paint uh, in all shades in these two toolboxes here. So let's grab 5213, 5,001, 5,002, 5,026, 5,028, 5,207, and 5,208. All right, cup on scale, scale on. And we'll start with uh, 5,213. Recipe says uh, pour that out till you get to 48.8. And I've over poured it a little bit and that's not a big deal. Just take a popsicle stick and uh, remove some of the paint until we're at 48.8. Next up is 5007. This is going to be a green blue to 54.6.
5006. This is going to be a more pure blue up to 59.0. And finally, 2203, which is paint reducer, up to 106. Let's stir this up. And it's ready to be poured in our gun. Let's be sure to pour our paint through a strainer prior to going into our gun. You'll get a three ounce cup, so we're probably not going to pour out all this paint here. Let's clean everywhere that paint might land with wax and grease remover. So it's a, a wet application. followed by a drying towel. Before you paint, you wanna make up your mind how far over you're gonna to go to where you stop. And you might be tempted to just paint this, this spot and stop here but you're gonna have an abrupt transition between your new paint and your old paint. So I say at a minimum, you wanna go about 12 inches beyond uh, your repair spot, which is gonna take me out to about here. Okay, now watch your distance between your gun and your bumper. You want it to be about the distance of your pinky to your thumb. And then also watch my gun speed. It's gonna be about twice as fast as when I laid down the primer. Also note how I keep the gun at a direct angle to the bumper. So if I'm spraying this panel, I'm here. If I'm spraying this panel, I'm here. If I'm spraying up here, I'm here. So the base coat's had 10 minutes to dry and in the best light that you have available you want to check and make sure that your transition from new paint to old paint is as seamless as possible and this looks uh, this looks pretty good here's a little trick if you're curious about 
what your base coat's going to look like uh, after you clear coat it. Uh, just take a little bit of wax and grease remover, put it in a spray bottle, and just mist it on there, and it sort of gives you a preview of how things are going to look. But uh, but definitely don't definitely don't wipe this with a towel. Just let it let it dry naturally.